Okay, next up, let's do some plant stuff before I lose the light. Pretty sunset, okay. So let's see. I always check my staghorn fern. Oof, feels pretty light. So I am going to soak that for 30 minutes. All right, so I got it off my stand. Happy Weldon and his clean cage. Okay, I'll go over here. And I just stick it in here. Okay, obviously cleaned after using it for the lizard. I'll carefully stick it in. Okay, I just leave the air plants that I have growing on it just in there, doesn't matter. And then I just, this is why I highly recommend getting a detachable shower head for everything fish and plant related. So I just kind of make it like, I don't know, medium temperature, as long as you're not boiling your plant or freezing it, uh, you're fine. So, and I just like fill it up with water. And I also wash off the leaves. Okay, that new leaf looks really cool there. But yeah, so I'm just gonna fill this up with water and let it run. And while I'm doing that, let's take a look at my other plants. So my other plants, I got this new plant. <laughs> this is Jack the Jackfruit. <laughs> I got it from my friend who um, moved to Spain and um, this is the first tree I've ever had and I named it Jack not only because it's a jackfruit but our mutual friend how we met his name is Jack so Jack the jackfruit looks good he looks like he's happy in his new home I'm gonna water my plants okay this one definitely needs some water one thing I did notice when I was looking over my plants earlier is some of them have the stinking mealy bugs. So like, look at this. That is a mealy bug. So out of all the pets or pests you can have on your plants, mealy bugs are pretty, um, whatchamacallit, innocuous. They're not that um, big of a deal. Like they're, it definitely came from this plant. Um, cause yeah, I didn't have any mealy bugs until I got this Ventricosa and, um, ever since then it's just been getting all over my collection, but it's not bad. So I'll show you how I deal with the mealy bugs, but overall, all the other plants look great. Okay. They all survived their neglect during my vacation. This is the plant that I did my, um, all the cuttings from. This is the Nepenthes maxima aristolocloides cross. You can see that it's just growing like gangbusters, love the new pictures, and all the cuttings from it look like they're doing really well too. They're all rooted, and we've got some new growth here. So that's a new bud over here. This one has a new bud growing out too, just an itty bitty one, but it's coming. And this one has grown quite a bit. This is a, my one of my new plants, Empolaria aristolocloides cross. I love it. It looks like it's um, it's settling in really well. I love the, how dark, velvety green the leaves are. And then this is what? Oh, oh, ooh. oh boy, that wasn't supposed to happen. Um, what is this one again? Miranda. That's right. This is the Miranda that I rescued a long time ago not a long time ago about a year ago now that I think about it and uh, it's growing really well love the basil shoot and anyway I'm gonna look at all of my plants and um, look for any of them that have mealybug so I'll be pulling down all my plants and taking care of that all right so I'm ready to debug this plant got my scissors some clean q-tips and rubbing alcohol and then a trash bag. So let's see. So this plant is an Nepenthes ventricosa hamata cross. 
it had some lovely pictures and then when I was in the Philippines it got super dried out so unfortunately all the pictures came off so you can see before this picture was half dead and I cut half of it off um, because there's still liquid in here so now it's completely reabsorbed all the liquid from the dead picture and now I can cut this off right here okay so let's throw that away check if there are any other dead ones so I would groom your plants before you water them so that they're not like you know water's getting all over the place plant looks pretty good the place to check really closely are here next to the growing points right in the kind of the the base of the leaves so you can see you there's definitely a mealy bug so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to dry it out using rubbing alcohol so I poured a little bit of rubbing alcohol into the cap I'm just going to dip it in here and then this is the fun part. Grrr. Just rub that thing. They turn pink when they die. Ugh. So anyway. And even though I can't see any adult mealybugs anywhere else on the plant, I'm just going to use the other side. Like that. And I'm just going to rub all the other joints of the plant just to make sure I get them all and uh, that's hard to do one-handed so I'm gonna take this off but I'm just gonna do all the points it doesn't hurt the plant at all and it's uh, really effective at getting rid of them all right so um, I just used another q-tip I cleaned out all the joints okay and uh, I think this plant is done it only took like a minute um, one thing is that um, Nepenthes drool, so their leaves are covered in like sticky sap, which they use to track insects, but I, I hate touching my plants because uh, a lot of the Maxima crosses especially, which is like my favorite Nepenthes, so <laughs> all my plants are Maxima crosses. Um, they all drool constantly, and, and then your hands are all sticky, and it sucks, but... Anyway, that was quick, so now I'm going to water it and move on to the next one. So these guys, these are bog plants. So I have Drosera adelaide over here, Cephalotus, Nutricularia sandersonii, which has such pretty flowers. Look at that. They look like little bunny ears. Um, let's see, what else do I have in here? Pygmy sundew back here. This is a um, pingua color cross. It flowered a while back. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and pull out these dead leaves on pingua color. Um, I just wait until the leaves shrivel before I just pluck them off. Um, let's see. I also have uh, Drosera floating back here. There we go. So that one's all nice and cleaned up. I have my baby Jacqueline in here. Growing really well. Okay, let me. Just wanted to so, show my poor Rob Cantley eye baby. Isn't this an awesome picture? But when I went to the Philippines and it dried out, it um, destroyed the newly growing leaf. And I'm really relieved that the next leaf, you can see how the next leaf like forces its way out of the, the petiole or the stem of the previous leaf. That one survived. So I could have been in deep trouble because this is just a baby and it has the one growing point. If this growing point hadn't recovered, uh, I don't know. I'm <laughs> really, really happy that it recovered. So, um, cause it's still a baby. The larger it gets, so technically there are growing points at the base of every leaf, but it's kind of hard to get Nepenthes to start growing from a different growing point. That's why we're always so happy whenever there are basal shoots like that that come up. For example, this one still doesn't have a basal shoot, even though I've had it for like seven years. Still no basal shoot. So 
So I'm getting a little worried. Hopefully the a basil shoot comes out of it soon. <laughs> so wait, is it set? Oh my goodness, I'm way over exaggerating. Seven years. It's actually, let me think. I got it in, okay, I think four years. Four years sounds better because I've been in the Bay Area for only six years. And I got, hmm. I'll have to look in the notes. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to look in my notes. So anyway, check that one. That one doesn't have any mealybugs. This one definitely has mealybugs. Ugh. And you can just see them in the, oh my gosh, this is so disgusting. Why? Nepenthes ventricosa is supposed to be easy. But anyway, I got a nice new picture here, which is good. Looks like it got crunched somehow. Hmm, that's not so pretty looking. Anyway, uh, getting neglected while I was in the Philippines was really, really bad for my plants. But they are recovering. They just take a while. They're not like fish that instantly do better. <laughs> they, um, they take a little bit. Oh, it looks a little better now. I uh, trimmed off more dead leaves. I quick, um you know, used a Q-tip with rubbing alcohol uh, on all the joints. Um, the reason why this thing is so tall and thin is that it was propagated from a cutting, which is why it doesn't look like my other plants. Those were all probably seed grown, okay? Um, so I don't know, there were more mealybugs than I anticipated. However, it was really good that there were no, no mealybugs up here in this top part. So that means the plant is stronger and uh, looked a lot better there. Wait, hold on. Oh, see, always check out the pictures. There's a few there that I'm gonna have to get. I don't know, this plant just seems to constantly have them. The other plants, so only the Hamata had it, the Hamata cross had it. So I think, I don't know, I might have to use um, a systemic insecticide or pesticide rather they're not insects a systemic pesticide to really get rid of it on this plant so that it can finally start to do better um, yeah if anyone has any suggestions for uh, just a mealybug problem that will not go away on this plant the other plants got it um, and got it really bad over break whenever they all got neglected and stressed out from the lack of water but um, the Ventricosa Hamada is the only one that has it now. So I don't know, I might have to upgrade to something stronger to really stamp it out. Oh my gosh, I spoke way too soon. This poor plant, which was hit particularly bad while I was gone because it was in a clay pot. Um, I thought I got rid of the mealybugs on it, but look at this. This is disgusting. Oh my God. So yeah, I am in the market for a mealybug pesticide. <laughs> uh, this is what happens whenever you don't bag up your plants whenever you're on vacation. <laughs> so in the future, anytime I'm gone for longer than a week, I am definitely gonna bag them all up in trash bags so that they don't get neglected so badly. Just wanted to show how I get deep into the leaf joints. You can just very carefully uh, put the q-tip head in and kind of rotate it. I don't know why it's not focusing. You can rotate it here. Maybe that's better. There we go. Perfect. So you can stick the q-tip head in and rotate it. And you can see all these disgusting insects die and turn pink. And then you can rub them out. So, oh my gosh. So this is another thing. If you use ties to hold your plants up, which Nepenthes kind of have a sprawling habit. So um, you're gonna need to stake your plant most likely. Uh, really be sure to check in the bindings um, and to disinfect these too. Like, don't forget to look here. So these poor pitchers started dying again while I was in the Philippines and they're slowly dying back. And because there are actually a few mealybugs here too, 
Mealybugs love Nepenthes because they're covered in those nectar glands that I mentioned earlier. And they're especially on the pitchers, right? So I'm going to cut them half off. So see here, this part is still good and there's still a lot of liquid in there. I'm just going to cut the top off so that it can slowly absorb the digestive liquid that is still in here. So yeah. Sometimes I put one of mel Weldon's mealybugs and feed it to the larger pitchers. I also use Osmocote uh, fertilizer. So, oops, let me make sure I don't cut the wrong thing one-handed. Well, this plant looks a little better. I cleaned out all the nodes and um, of mealybugs. I don't think there's any left, but um, we'll see. Oh my gosh, that was awful. Um, <laughs> and then you can see I just trimmed off the top of this picture because there's a ton of stuff still uh, that can be absorbed in here. And um, yeah, just be really careful when you're moving your plants around that this doesn't spill out because there's no top. Oh, crap, there's still some here. Oh, I hate this. Okay, so this plant, uh, let's see. I wish, if I could, I would put weights on it to hold it under, but you know, it's fine. It's got plenty of water, I'm sure, because it is heavy. So I'm gonna pull it out and just let it drain in the bathtub for another like 20 minutes before I put it back. Cause you can see there's a lot of water dripping out of the plant and I don't want that on my living room floor. So goodbye plant. Okay, so because these pitchers are on the way out, they're already getting reabsorbed and so on, I am going to way over fertilize them. So I'm gonna add like four or five into both of these. And these are the Osmocote fertilizer pellets, okay? Oh my gosh, There's, these racks are so sticky because of the nepenthes that covered in sap. But anyway, yeah, I just put one pellet into each pitcher normally, but because they're on their way out, I'm gonna load them full of it. And then these guys, I'm going to put just one tiny one. And I'll show you, see, just one pellet and then just put it in the pitcher. I can go. Yep. So fertilized. Plants are fertilized. You don't want to like super overdo it unless they're on their way out like those are. Then you can really over fertilize them. I saw that in another YouTube video and his plants looked amazing. Um, so yeah, just going to put one in each one of these pictures. I think this is my favorite plant. I love this plant. Can't wait till it vines up again like it like it was. I got my staghorn ba fern back on here. You can see why I have this giant tray down here that kind of goes out like this. That's so that it can catch all the drips from my uh, staghorn fern after I um, after I water it. So because uh, my boyfriend's gonna be home from the gym soon and he's gonna need the shower. <laughs> And I don't want him to accidentally step on my plant. <clears throat> may or may not have happened before. So anyway, beautiful staghorn fern. Sometimes I will trim off any brown bits, but it didn't have a lot of them this time. And uh, yeah, the air plants look great. They're huge. <laughs> they used to be like a fifth the size. But um, anyway, those are my aqua or aquarium plants. Those are my carnivorous plants and friends because they're not all carnivorous. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed watching the mealworm, or mealworm, wow, my head, the uh, mealbug freak out. Um, just goes to show how long it takes plants to recover from even just a very short period of neglect. Like these plants were doing so well before I went to the Philippines. And then just those two weeks of getting watered, I think once during that time period was just really horrendous on them because it was a lot sunnier than I thought it was going to be while we were gone. And it just totally dried them out. So plants, 
especially slow growing plants like Nepenthes take a really long time to recover from neglect like that. So it'll probably be until summer before they're back to their former glory, which kind of sucks, but you know, it's just the name of the game for these guys. Um, yeah, if you liked these videos and you like hanging out with me, then please subscribe. Would love to have you just, you know, be a part of the, uh, the family. Now I'm rambling. So <laughs> hope y'all have a good day.